Model steam engines top tip time part 38. In this episode I'm still working on this old beam engine and this is a clip of a test run at high speed just to make sure that nothing breaks after I'd done quite a bit of work on it which I will be outlining in this episode. To make this engine perfect would take quite a long time. This is a commercial project so I'm trying to be economic with my time. Nearly all of the jobs are minor but they mount up and very soon things can go wrong. This episode highlights the problems when parts are not machined to the correct tolerances. First the piston modification. I was going to make a new piston but then I thought well I would like to use as many original parts as possible. This piston's fine, there's nothing wrong with it, it's a good fit in the cylinder, it just needs putting together on the piston rod and I'm using some Loctite 603 so it won't work loose. The two halves of the piston are bolted together using a single 5BA bolt. The more meticulous viewers will have noticed that originally I assembled the piston on the rod without putting the cylinder cover in place. So before the Loctite 603 is set I quickly removed the piston, fitted the top cover and reassembled everything. Now it's over to my Boxford lathe and I have the piston rod securely clamped in the chuck and I've centre drilled, if you can see it, right on the end of the shaft to take a live centre. All I need to do now is cut a groove to take a silicone o-ring. I thought at this time it would be a good idea to check the diameter of the bore to see what was wrong with the piston ring. And here is the obvious answer. It's supposed to be one inch in diameter, but it's a bit bigger than that. So the piston ring, like this o-ring, was a very sloppy fit in the cylinder. The builder's fix for the piston ring in this oversized cylinder was to put a piece of wire around the groove in the piston. But that was no good at all. There was still a big gap in the piston ring and the piston ring was no longer round. So as I cut the groove for the silicone piston ring, I'm not going to cut it quite as deep as I normally would because when the silicone piston ring is fitted to the piston, it needs to be pushed outwards very, very slightly. I can feel where the piston ring is by using my thumb and I estimate that if I deepen the groove by about two thousandths of an inch the piston will be held against the cylinder wall to successfully seal the piston against the oversized cylinder bar. As I fit the piston into the cylinder you can see that the piston itself is not a really snug fit in the cylinder. That's okay as long as the o-ring is. I think it's time to bolt the top cylinder cover onto the cylinder and I'm going to use some of this excellent gasket sealant. I've had this in the workshop for many years, I think the last time I used it was on my 7.25 inch gauge titch when I fitted the gaskets to that in 1996 and they never needed any attention because the seals never leaked. So it should be ok for this engine. Here I'm fitting the bolts in place, first of all with the nut spinner and then I will use a spanner to finish the job off. The drilling of the bolt holes on the top of this cylinder cover is a bit random, I don't think there was any measuring at all. Some of the machining of this engine is quite good and some of it isn't. And the drilling of the four holes to hold the cylinder cover in place is not one of the high points of the build quality of this engine. Don't forget I'm only renovating this engine and repairing it in fact, not rebuilding the entire thing down to the last nut and bolt. It's now time to reassemble the Watts parallel motion. But before I do that it's a great time to demonstrate what happens when I rotate the flywheel with some compressed air being admitted. You can see the exact time when the piston starts to move. The good thing is when the piston's at the top or bottom of its stroke with the compressed air admitted, it's impossible to move by hand. And the only place that the compressed air is leaking is from the gaskets around the steam chest. Nothing is blowing past the piston to the exhaust pipe. As reassembly is exactly the same as disassembly in reverse, I'm doing this at a high speed. And in no time at all, except for one link, the Watts parallel motion is reassembled. Before fitting the last link in place, I thought it would be a good idea to oil the engine. And as it turned out, fitting this last link was the most difficult part of the job. But after a while, it slid into position and I could bolt it in place. This is the final part of the operation, tightening the nuts. A little bit more oil I think is a good idea, you can never have too much when you're running an engine. And now ladies and gentlemen, it's time to turn on the compressed air. 
The engine is running, it's running slowly, and better still, it's running quietly. The valve timing isn't in the right position, as you can see by the hesitancy as the crank pin on the crankshaft goes over the top. After I've worked on steam engines, I always run them very fast, just to make sure that nothing falls off or breaks. And even with the valve timing less than perfect, this one seems to run very well. When I apply some pressure to the flywheel with my hand, I can feel where the valve timing is out. It's OK at the bottom, this is admitting just before top dead centre. The slight noise that the engine is currently making, I think is due to the fact that the flywheel has quite a lot of side play. So first of all I adjust the valve eccentric and move that closer to the bearing block and then I slackened off the grub screw on the flywheel and move that closer to the eccentric. This clip shows me doing the job. Things like side play on crankshafts and side play on connecting rods generally will cause some mechanical noise. What I'm doing here is firmly tightening the grub screw in the eccentric using a pair of pliers. Once I readjusted the eccentric, I checked where the air was being admitted, and as you can see, it's just before top dead centre, but it's still not right. I'm using the term top dead centre to describe when the piston in the cylinder is at its fullest extent in either direction. I cannot get the valve timing to be right, and that's because the valve is in the wrong position. I did mess about with this in an earlier episode. Once I removed the valve linkages and rotated the valve spindle, one turn in an anti-clockwise direction, that put everything right and the slide valve is admitting the air perfectly at each end of the stroke. I'm not running this engine on much air at all, and when it stopped I'd turned the tap off completely by accident. I'll stop talking and let you watch it run for a while. That seems to be running quite well. I turned off the compressed air and turned it back on again and you can see that it's definitely admitting before top dead centre. The main thing is the engine is running in harmony with itself, the slide valve's not perfect, a lot about this engine isn't perfect, but it runs very well now. I need to make some gaskets for the steam chest and that will be the final episode. To indicate how quiet the engine is, I spoke to the camera when I was filming. How quiet is it? Well I'll just speak next to the camera I think you'll hear that it's running fairly quietly. One more high speed run to make sure nothing drops off it, and it doesn't, so I'm going to leave it running to the end of the video. I'd like to say, please stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.